Hello, welcome to St. Mary's Church. Our service will begin in a few moments. Before we start, we want you to know that our highest priority is to keep you and everyone who enters our building as safe as possible. As such, we ask that you remain close to your seat and maintain social distancing for the duration of the service. In accordance with government guidance, we ask that you keep your mask on while you are in the building and refrain from singing to limit the potential spread of COVID-19. The use of the toilets are restricted. If you need to use one, please speak to a member of staff at the back. As you will see marked on the floor, we have a one-way traffic flow in and out of the building. At the end of the service, you will be instructed to leave through the side doors row by row. If you are talking to people on the piazza afterwards, please make sure you are physically distanced from others and keep to a group of six. Thank you for joining us today. We're so glad you're here. Good morning, St Mary's. Let's um, stand to worship. Welcome people who are online. Hello. Um, And let's stand together and worship God. I'll just pray as we begin. Father, we thank you for this new day. We thank you for the opportunity to gather with our brothers and sisters here and our brothers and sisters um, watching at home and worshipping at home. And we pray now that you would meet with us, that we would, that our minds and souls would connect in with you and that you would change us and transform us. Amen.
not forsaken I am who you say I am You are for me, not against me I am who you say I am Who the Son sets free Oh, it's free indeed I'm a child of God Yes, I am You were the Word at the beginning One with God, the Lord Most High Hidden glory in creation Now revealed in you our Christ What a beautiful name it is What a beautiful name it is The name of Jesus Christ my King What a beautiful name it is Nothing compares to this What a beautiful name it is The name of Jesus We didn't want heaven without us So Jesus, He brought heaven down great, your love was greater, why could separate us now, what a wonderful name it is, what a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ my King, what a wonderful name it is. Nothing compares with this What a wonderful name it is The name of Jesus What a wonderful name it is The name of Jesus Cause death could not hold you Fell tall before you, you silenced the boast of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory, for you are raised to life again. You have no rival, you have no equal. God, you reign. Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the glory. Yours is the name of all names. What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is Nothing can stand against What a powerful name it is The name of Jesus What a powerful name it is The name of Jesus Cause death could not hold you The veil tore before you Silence the bulls of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring, praise of your glory. For you are raised to life again. You have no rival, you have no equal. Now and forever. God, you reign. 
Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the glory. Yours is the name above all names. Cause yours is the kingdom. Yours is the glory. Yours is the name above all names. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares with it. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. Let's just take a moment to meditate on the name of Jesus. It might be helpful just to say his name in your mind. And all that that name represents to us. no greater name there is no more powerful name than Jesus Jesus you understand us Jesus you know us and you love us Jesus you choose us you are for us you are with us we honor your name. We respect you. We worship you. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. darkness, my God, that is who you are. We make a miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, touching every heart. I worship you, I worship you, you are here, healing every heart, I worship you, I worship you, you are here, turning lives around. I worship you, I worship you, you are here, mending every heart, I worship you, I worship you, cause you are, we make a miracle work, a promise keep light in the darkness my God that is who you are you are we make miracle work promise keep light in the darkness my God that is who you are you are we make miracle work promise keep Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are way make miracle work, promise keep. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. And even when I can't feel it, you're working. 
Even when I don't see it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Sway maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Cause you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light. Like you promise, come like the rain, come, Lord Jesus, come fill our hearts again. Just receive His love now. Like you promise, come like the rain, come, Lord Jesus, come fill our hearts again. Like you promise, come like the rain, come Lord Jesus, come fill our hearts again, so come. Like you promised, come like the rain, come Lord Jesus, come fill our hearts again.
Thank you, Lord, that you always meet with us, that you heal us and you refresh us. Amen. Thank you very much, guys. That was so nice to have live worship. <sighs> um, now we have at least one, I think maybe one new member of the congregation today. So can I invite um, Rachel? You might need to bring your parents, Rachel, Annabelle and David. Oh, 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 two, oh, two. oh I'm good. And um, Oka, can you come with your mum too? Fantastic. Come on up. Either side of me in a socially safe, distance way. I'm going to negotiate an interview. It's going to be fine. Sorry, Pip, I didn't see you back there. Fantastic. Hi. Yes, come this side. So exciting. Welcome. Hi, folks. Okay, let's, get, let's start with Rachel. Hello, Rachel. And um, can you just give us a little bit of uh, when was Rachel born and how have the first few weeks been? After you. Uh, <clears throat> So uh, Rachel was born at um, Lewisham Hospital on the 17th of March at 9.52 p.m. Oh, well remembered. Uh, 3.34 kilograms. <laughs> yeah, just... And it was, um, it's been, it, was a, it was a very uh, intense experience, like, yeah. especially being a male and watching a little one arrive on the earth. Possibly a little more intense for Annabelle, but yes. Way just more. A <laughs> My respect has, <laughs> wow. <laughs> and that's the right answer, David. <laughs> yeah. But other than that, it's been lovely. She's been amazing. It's been a, a blessed experience. We've just got to thank God because without him, this would never have, never have been so amazing. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, it's absolutely delightful to be you. Hi. Hi, look, this is your family. It's nice to see you. <laughs> she says hi. It's great to see you all. You're looking great. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> that, that's Alex's idea. Right, welcome. Welcome, Oka. And she's yeah. asleep, so we won't she's be too loud, will we? How has it been, Pip? Um, yeah, it's been great and bonkers because this is the second edition. We've got Noah, who Andy's just taken downstairs. Um, but, yeah, she's amazing. And we had her at home, which was the birth that we wanted to have uh, in the pool. Um, and she's, she's on the 9th of March, so very close. Um, she was eight pounds, seven ounces. And, yeah, the, the labour was good. And uh, we've just been, you know, it's taken us two months, I think, to actually <laughs> go, it's okay having two. Yeah. We're managing. Yeah. I mean, we're always late for church and for everything we do, but there's, maybe that's no change with one or two children. Who knows? <laughs> well, it's so nice to see her. It's yeah. actually her second time, isn't it? it is. So she's a bit of a pro. Which oh, she's, is why she's sleeping through the notices. Exactly. She already knows the system. And she, she, she can deal with loud sounds, having <laughs> an did. older sister. Okay, let me just quickly pray for them both. Oh, I shouldn't have put that down on the thing. Sorry. Father God, we just thank you so much for these two new lives. We thank you for Rachel. We thank you for Oka. And we thank you for, that you know already the plans and the purposes that you have for them. So we pray that you would bless them. You would bless um, their families and that they would grow up in and knowing and loving you their whole lives. Amen. Thanks. It's so nice to meet you. Okay, and on to the notices. I've got the notices here. It's all right. You see? I'm fine. I'm, it's, all, it's all in hand. I know I scribbled on your copy. Sorry about that. That's John and gesticulating at me from the front. Okay, tickets for next week. Um, and we, I, Obviously, there are spaces, but it is really helpful for us, particularly for kids' teams, if you can tell us if you're coming. So do book in tickets. I know it's a bit of a faff, but it would be absolutely great if you can book in your tickets by using this QR code. QR code or um, visiting, you know, the website and stuff. Um, week two of what we lost, which is just a chance to really reflect on and therefore move on from the last year. Um, led by John over Zoom with live worship. Really nice, really good session. First session, if you missed it because you couldn't do it, then you can watch it on our YouTube channel or via the website and you can join in um, this week. So 8 p.m. on Wednesday evening to celebrate 
being, back to, being able to gather in 30 people or more, whatever, groups outside, we're going to go for a picnic on the 23rd of May, which probably means it will be pouring with rain. But anyway, let's go for it, because as we know, there is no such thing as bad weather, just inappropriate clothing. So um, we are going to be, we are going to be picnicking. <laughs> And that's what we're going to be doing. So um, bring your own picnic and we'll gather in groups of 30 and, and however many groups we need, if you see what I mean. It's going to be perfectly COVID safe and fun. Um, and then we'll meet um, by the bandstand, you know. So you go Clarence Gate, go over the little bridge, turn left. Um, we're also planning on having some baptism services. We've got quite a lot of um, people to baptize because we didn't resort to the, you know, water gun approach, which some churches did. So we felt it was better just to baptize in a more normal way. So if you're interested in being baptized or reaffirming your baptismal vows, then talk to Matt. Matt's now going to stand up and wave. So you know who Matt is. Um, he would absolutely love to talk to you. And then we'll plan the services at the beginning of July. We are also, one of the sadnesses, I think, of not um, being normal yet, if you see what I mean, was ever normal, no, but as a church, um, is that you can't, we don't see the kids, we don't see the kids in the main space, so we thought it might be fun, oh, oh, is, this, is this a fun thing that we can now do, Nicholas, wave at me to tell me? Yes, okay, good. So we're going to just Skype in to, um, nothing can go wrong, um, to Kirstein and the kids team, so let us join them now. Hi everybody, it's so great to see you, so great to be with you. So I'm really grateful that we're back at church, we are loving seeing the kids in person, but I thought better for you to hear it direct from the kids, so let me ask them a quick question. Boys and girls, are we happy to be back? Yeah! But I also thought I'd ask them a couple of questions about why being back matters. Chloe, quick, come over here. Come a bit closer, closer to the camera. Chloe, what is the best thing about being back? My relationship with Jesus. So we're talking about how our relationship with Jesus is developing, being back together. Excellent, Rafi. Come tell us what you love about being back. Um, the best thing about being back is playing games and having fun together. Playing games, having fun together. And Louisa, what are you enjoying about being back together? The best thing to see back in church is that we get to see everyone back in church and have fun together. All being back together. All things, I think we'd all agree. Um, we are loving being back together. We have got a brilliant series coming up next. We're going to be interviewing Governor B. We're going to be interviewing Bear Grylls. We're all about living with faith in our walk towards Pentecost. But it's great to be with you, boys and girls. Should we say goodbye? Bye. Fantastic. Um, and won't it be nice when we can see them racing around again up here? Um, and now your favourite time of the service when you give, if you choose to, to the life of the church. The QR code will come up and um, it's just an opportunity to, um, and we know times are difficult, so whatever you can give is just very helpful for us. Thank you very much. And then what happens? Do I just keep talking? To the people around you. If you can, in a mask, at a social distance. I've actually done this in the wrong order. I had it written down, but obviously didn't read it. Um, I thought it'd be good to pray. Let's just gather and pray before Wale speaks um, for the needs of our country, the needs of the world. Um, so I'll just lead us in a short time of praying. Father, thank you that you know and love every single person on this planet that you, um, they are all precious in your sight and known by you. 
And we pray uh, today particularly for India, for our brothers and sisters in that country just really struggling to um, stay safe and get control of this pandemic. We pray for generosity, that you would release generous hearts across the world for anything that they need that would help uh, the health services and help their communities just care for those who are sick um, and stop the infection spreading. We just pray for divine intervention. I pray for where there has just been people making decisions that have been less than helpful, that you would just release and um, change those decisions and that you would gradually, that they would be able to bring this whole thing under control. I pray for every family in that place and every family across our planet who are grieving, that they would know the comfort of the living God. And Lord, we, we pray for all those people in our country who got elected through local councils, through um, the, the new MP and um, the mayoral, all, all the mayoral stuff. Um, and we pray for men and women of integrity. We pray that as they join um, org the organizations that make decisions, that look out for people, that make decisions that affect all of our lives, that you would give them all um, great wisdom and great compassion and that they would be people who um, have huge integrity to do what is right. Amen. And we pray for our families. We pray for those we love. We pray. For, we just remember now those who particularly have been on our hearts and minds over the last few days or weeks that we just want to lift them to you. So I'm just going to let you lift. Think of those people that God is just kind of bringing to your mind now. We thank you, Lord, that you are always with us. And I pray that you would, if those for the people that we've just been thinking of, that you would maybe give us just a word or an image and that we would just be able to communicate your love and your knowing of them as we message them or as we meet with them. We pray you would intervene in their lives. And we pray for all the children in this church who are doing exams of some kinds in just this really odd exam phase. I pray that you would give them courage and confidence and just a sense of being at peace with their own self. And that you would just help them really do well in all the things, that all the challenges that are currently before them. Amen. Okay, now we have a guest speaker who's going to appear on the screen called Wale, and he runs a um, network of churches called Imprint, and he is a, a friend of ours and an absolutely fantastic person, so I'm delighted to um, cyber welcome him to St. Mary's. Welcome. Hi, friends. My name is Wale Ekbaj. Hi friends, my name is Wale Ekbaje and thank you so much for having me St. Mary's. I'm so excited to be speaking to you guys in your Sunday service. And I actually did I actually lead a church called Imprint, which is based in both London and Leicester. We have plants both in London and Leicester. And I'm speaking to you from our London plant here in Bank. So in, in East Central, so just across Central London from you guys. And before I actually dive into my talk today, I just quickly just want to show love and honour to John Peters and the staff team at St. Mary's. Many of you guys don't know this, but St. Mary's holds a very special place in my heart. Our community, we hold a creative outreach event called the Imprint Gospel Showcase, big name. But essentially, it is an event that creatively tells the story of Jesus and it's, it's, it's evangelistic in nature. And we had our first ever Imprint Gospel Showcase in London at St. Mary's Church in 2018. And it actually helped us to plant our base here in London, here in Bank. So I just want to say a big thank you to John Peters, to St. Mary's for your love and support over the years. And I'm sure for many of us, um, <laughs> this goes without saying, but I'm sure many of us, we've heard this many times, that this last year has been crazy. It has literally been one for the books. And I don't think anyone could have anticipated the year that we had last year. A year full of mental trauma, confusion, sickness, strife, injustice, malice, division, broken relationships, grief, and death. And on top of that, it felt that... Um, Last year itself spilled over 
into 2021. But finally, in the fifth month of this year, it feels like things are starting to get, are starting to go back to normal. You know, the sun is shining, even though it's still cold outside, but at least it is shining. Um, the social interactions are increasing and the extra lockdown body weight is shedding. Things are slowly going back to normal. And it feels honestly for us as a nation and even us as a church, it feels like we are in a transitionary stage. It feels like we are actively moving from a year of death, sickness, lockdown and everything that it brought into a season of freedom, bliss, vitality, aka summer. It seems like things are actually, if we're in a very long time, are moving upwards. And in the book of Deuteronomy, we can read and see an account where the Israelites themselves were in their own transitionary stage, where they had already been in, in the wilderness for quite a number of decades. And in total, they were in the wilderness for 40 years. And in Deuteronomy, we, we have accounts of Moses speaking to a particular generation of Israelites that saw their parents' generation die in the wilderness and saw how their parents' generation were disqualified from entering the promised land that God had for them because of their unfaithfulness. So you can just imagine in their own transitory stage um, how they must have felt in, in the midst of all of that. You know, finally, after all these years of walking, of surviving, of hoping that one day this promised land will be a reality for us, you can just imagine how they felt. In this stage, it, it, it was essentially, they were almost there, but not quite yet. They were almost there, but not quite yet. And it's as if they could taste, they, like the freedom, the promised land was just at, it was not far off. And in this stage of almost there, but not quite yet, what did the Lord have to say to them? What did the Lord say through his servant Moses? And really briefly, just giving some context before we read some scripture, Moses is actually telling this current generation that you are going to enter the promised land. And this promised land is great, but there's a certain way that the Lord wants you to act when you are in this promised land. And let's just read um, a description of this promised land. So let's turn to Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 6. And I'm going to be reading from the NLT version. It also has some commands from the Lord. It says this, So obey the commands of the Lord your God by walking in his ways and fearing him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land of, a good land of flowing streams and pools of water with fountains and springs that gush out, out in the valleys and hills. It is a land of wheat and barley, of grapevines, fig trees, pomegranates, of olive oil and of olive oil and honey. It is a land where food is plentiful and nothing is lacking. It is a land where iron is as common as stone and as copper is as is abundant in the hills. If we read um, onwards, it also says that in this land, your gold and silver will multiply and you'll be able to build fine homes. So this is a description that Moses is saying to this, um, to this um, generation of Israelites. But if we read onwards, and we'll read a bit later on, if you read onwards, Moses is basically warning the Israelites. He's saying that you guys are going to enter the promised land. You guys are going to enter a season of bliss, a season of favor like you've never encountered before. But he says, and he warns them of dangers, things that can potentially happen to them in a season of bliss, in a season of favor, in the promised land, if they are not careful. Things that can happen to them, things that they can become if they're not vigilant. So in a sense, what are some of these dangers of a season? Of, what are some of the dangers that can occur in a season of bliss? The first thing that Moses refers to is in verse 11. He essentially says that you can forget the Lord and his instructions. 
Unfortunately, there are many times throughout biblical history where the Israelites cried out to God. They cried out to be set free from the persecution, cried out to be set free from the turmoil, from their lack, and also cried out to be set free and delivered from their enemies. And when the Lord heard their cries in his mercy, in his mercy, he set them free. In his mercy, he gave them victory. In his mercy, he provided for them. And how did the Israelites respond to them? Respond to God's mercy. Often they repaid him back by forgetting about him. In fact, they started entertaining different religions, other world views, and devoted themselves to other gods of other nations. And on top of that, they also started carrying out the practices of these other religions and neglected their God, neglected the instructions of Yahweh. And the reason why I mention this is because us too, as a nation, as a church, we are entering a season of bliss. We are it seems that we are entering, we are actively leaving the wilderness, actively leaving lockdown, and we are now entering a season of freedom, a season of bliss. But there's a huge temptation for us if we're to take Moses' words seriously and Moses' warning to the Israelites seriously. There's a huge temptation for us as well as we come out of lockdown to forget God to get lost in our pursuits of having a good time, which we all deserve. But it's possible that we can get lost in it. And as our social interactions extend beyond our online small groups and our families, it is possible that us too start neglecting God and start employing the agendas and the gods and the practices of others. And in our community, um, in lockdown two, <laughs> there's been quite a few. In our community, in lockdown two, we did a series on purity. And there's one particular um, um, service where we spoke explicitly about sexual purity. And we looked at some of the things that Jesus had to say on this subject. And in particular, in Matthew chapter 5, verse 27, we can see that Jesus raises up the sexual ethic of his day. And he clearly articulates that if anyone looks at another individual lustfully that, that they are not married to, they have committed adultery. So here we can see that Jesus petitions his believers in, 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 stewarding, in stewarding purity, not just in their actions, but also in their minds. But, you know, it's really easy, it's really easy, especially in summer, especially since we've been in lockdown for so long, to push the boundary when it comes to this particular area. And that's just one example that we can neglect. That's just one example among so many things that if we are not careful, if we're not vigilant, that we can start neglecting the instructions of the Lord in different aspects of our lives. Another danger in a season of bliss that Moses warns the Israelites is of pride and self-reliance. Moses says that in this promised land where you basically will receive everything that you ever wanted, he warns them of pride and self-reliance. He says pride and self-reliance can creep in. You know, in a season of bliss, when things are flourishing, we often don't see our need for God. I remember there was a time when I was in Slovakia for one of my friend's wedding and I met a beautiful Scandinavian couple. Honestly, they were couple girls. They were, they were so cool. And they did so many outdoor activities and they were so much more fitter than I, but they were just, they were just such a cute couple. And they knew I was a church leader, so they started asking me about my experience of leading a church and stuff. And after I finished articulating my experiences, I asked them, what does your faith look like? Do you believe in God? And they looked at me almost stunned that I would ask them such a question. And they said these words to me. They said, why would we, why would we believe in God? We have money. That's what they said to me. They said, why would we believe in God? We have money. 
And obviously, this was not a Christian couple, but it is possible that in a time of opulence and success, for pride and self-reliance to arise even in the believer's heart. And it's interesting that Moses says in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 17, he says these words, essentially, that the Lord put you in a time of wilderness so that you will not be able to say that I have achieved this wealth with my own strength and energy. And even for us, perhaps we might not actively say that I have achieved this wealth with my own strength and energy. I have achieved this status. I'm able to do so forth and so forth with my own and uh, with my own intellect and reasoning and skills. But we can live a lifestyle. We can have a heart posture that basically echoes that. And this last year has shown us that human reasoning and intellect is not always sufficient. As much as I'm grateful for our leaders and our healthcare system and our education system and so forth, the pandemic highlighted that there's fragility in every person, every structure and in every institution. And Jesus says these words, in Matthew chapter 7, verse 24, he says, anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise. Like a person who builds a house on solid rock, though the rain comes in torrents and the flood of waters rise, the wind beats against that house, it won't collapse because it is built on bedrock. But anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it is foolish. Like a person who builds a house on sand, when the rain and floods come, the winds beat against the house. It will collapse with a mighty crash. So what is Jesus here saying? Jesus is acknowledging that life is hard sometimes, that there's going to be flood waters, there's going to be torrents, literally like the last year that we've had. And he's saying that if those who, who build their, their lives on me, if they follow my teaching, that when these torrents come, when these obstacles come, they will be able to withstand the pressure. But he's clearly articulating that if a person puts their absolute trust in something else, absolute faith in something else, tries to follow the wisdom and the logic of the day, then when these pressures come, they won't be able to withstand the pressure. And perhaps that has been your story in this last year, that this season has actually unraveled and has clearly shown you that the foundations of my life aren't stable. But I just want to tell you that there is hope because Jesus right here is offering himself and he's saying that if you listen to my teaching, if you follow me, if you put your hope in me, then you will be able to withstand the pressures of this life. But it takes absolute trust and it takes absolute hope in him. And I know for some of us, this last year has shown us that. And another way that self-reliance might manifest itself is that especially now that things uh, are going back to normal, almost going back to normal, another way that self-reliance might manifest itself is that we might start to become indifferent to church and the gathering of other Christians. Perhaps for some of you guys, your online small group was a really great temporary fix for you feeling isolated and detached from others in lockdown. But now restaurants are open again and bars are open again. You can hang out with your real friends. You know, those friends that probably didn't even message you over the last year. But, you know, I get to hang out with my real friends. And if that is you, if you're perhaps listening to me right now and you are thinking of maybe I don't really need to be as intentional or as plugged in in church as I was in lockdown, then I just want to encourage you with this verse. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25, NLT version, it says, And let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. 
I'll read that one more time. And let us not neglect meeting together as some people do. Another translation says, as some people have a habit of doing, a habit of neglecting their Christian family. But scripture says, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. You see, friends, the church community, Sunday services, small groups, and everything else that happens are not just a temporary fix to combat loneliness in lockdown. It helps, but it is actually a primal mechanism orchestrated by the Lord to equip you in your spiritual development and growth. And can I just suggest that it is a necessity? It is hard to thrive spiritually without the pruning and encouragement of others. So I've quickly spoken about some of the dangers that that the Israelites were warned against. And even for us, that we perhaps might fall into if we're not careful. So how do we protect ourselves from these dangers of following other agendas and gods, neglecting the Lord's instructions and becoming proud and self-reliant? I have a simple solution, one that Moses offers to the Israelites in Deuteronomy. And he says this, he says, he articulates, to remember he literally says do not forget do not forget he he repeats that like a refrain several times do not forget do not forget when the lord did this let me even just read it briefly for example he says do not forget that he led you through the great and terrifying wilderness with its poisonous snakes and scorpions Another one says, do not forget how he set you free from the land of of Egypt, from slavery. Do not forget, do not forget. And how does this apply to us? My petition is that as you go into life post-lockdown, that you do not forget and that you remember how the Lord met you in so many situations. That you remember how he brought you out from a state of paralytic mental turmoil and stress, from financial difficulty, from addiction, from severe isolation, from abuse and broken relationships, and even from COVID-19 that the Lord has been faithful to so many of us in this season. I know for many of us, perhaps, that we have seen God's miraculous power and have known him to be a deliverer in this season. For others, perhaps you felt like the Lord has been a comforter to you, especially when you lost someone. And I can completely relate to that. And in various ways, we have seen God's faithful hand. And my call to you as you enter life post lockdown is the same call that Moses gives to the Israelites. A call to remember and to obey. To perhaps remember the pain of this last season, but to remember even more how God moved and how he was faithful in your situation. And to even recognize what he's doing around you now. And with the various agendas and distractions that summer will bring, especially after a year of lockdown, my petition to you, St. Mary's, is to be a community that seeks first the kingdom of God, to live a life that honors him, and to truly see that he will give you everything you will need, as Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 says. You know, if we look at a biblical overview of the Israelites, they were a group of people that constantly fell prey to the narrative and the idea of paving their own reality and doing their own thing. But often this led to their own demise and was severely detrimental for them. It led them to slavery, it led them to persecution and it led them to just much heartache. And we can see this same narrative in Jesus' depiction of the prodigal son. He wanted to pave his own way, his own reality, to do his own thing. And on top of that, he had the money to do so because he asked his father for an early inheritance. 
But after doing his own thing, after following his own pursuits, it did not leave him more satisfied, self-secure and fulfilled in life. Pursuing his own ideals rather than his father left him more endangered, isolated, hungry, ashamed, dirty and just straight up broke. But scripture says that when the son came to his senses, he thought he could offer himself back to his father as a slave. And when he came back to his father's home, scripture says that his father opened, um, welcomed him back with opened arms and instantly reinstated him as a son and gave him everything he needed. I remember a friend of mine who's a training vicar. Maybe I didn't say that before. I am a training vicar. So I have a lot of essays and assignments. So please pray for me. <laughs> but yes, a friend of mine who as well is a training vicar. I was walking um, with him. And a few weeks ago, he just said to me, he can't wait for this summer because it is going to be the most hedonistic summer we have ever seen. And he was really excited about this. And he said, the reason why I'm so excited is because people are going to aimlessly chase their own pursuits, try to do everything underneath the sun. And when they come to the end of their pursuits, they will realize that it doesn't satisfy their souls. It doesn't satisfy that inner hunger that they have inside of them. And he says, ultimately, this will increase people's hunger for God. And people will find Jesus in all of this. And to be honest, I do completely resonate with what he's saying. I do believe we're going to see a rise of prodigals, a rise of people who are going to come to the end of their pursuits and be wanting and be thinking, I'm still thirsty. And there's going to be a hunger for something that's like, I need something to quench my thirst. And in the midst of all of that, the Lord is going to be faithful and is going to meet people. But the thing is, reality is that if we look at this story of the prodigal son, it took the prodigal son, the son who turned away from his rich father, it took him getting to a very lowly place before he realized that his pursuits didn't satisfy him and everything that he ever wanted was already in his father's house. And it's similar with us, everything that we ever wanted is in God's house. So my prayer for you, St. Mary's, is that in the midst of everyone else in your world, in this city, in your family and your friendship groups, in the midst of them chasing their own desires, their own pursuits this summer, my prayer is that you will be a community that fixes your eyes on Jesus, that you will not neglect his instructions, that you will not forget him but that you will find his words to be true. That if you seek him first, that you, he will give you everything that you'll need and that you'll be able to testify that all you longed for was in your father's house. Amen. And lastly, earlier in my talk, I basically spoke about how for some of us, we've encountered the faithfulness of God. But I also know that maybe for some of us as well listening, that it feels like the opposite. It feels like, in fact, God has neglected me. God has been unfaithful to me and to my own circumstance. And I just want to say that Jesus, despite how long you've been a Christian, or despite who you are, Jesus does say there's going to be trouble in this life. But he says, take heart, he has overcome the world. There, there will be a day where there will be no more mourning, where there will be no more sorrow. And that his grace is sufficient to even meet us right now, as hard as the season is for some of us. And I'm just reminded of a scripture um, in James where it basically talks about how a season of testing, a time of suffering, builds and cultivates endurance and perseverance.
And my prayer is that as hard as this season is for many of us, just before <laughs> things go back to normal, my prayer is that the Lord will increase our capacity to endure that we will become spiritually mature throughout this process and that we will be a group of people that despite the situation will radiate his joy, will radiate his goodness and will just be a true reflection of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. So let's just um, respond to that in prayer. Lord, we say now that we want to be a people who remember. We remember your comfort. We remember your goodness. We remember your faithfulness. And as things shift around us and change around us again, we pray, as Wallo said, that we would be people who obey, who continue to obey you. We put our trust in you. You are the rock on which our lives are built. And we pray to you for those we know who have, don't know that truth. They may have once known it or they've kind of wandered away from it or they've never ever known that they could have a relationship with you. And we pray that you would just bring to mind people in our lives that we could speak truth and love into their lives. And we pray for many prodigals to come back in this season. Amen. We're going to have a song now by Shane. Thanks, Shane. Are you hurting and broken within? Overwhelmed by the weight of your sin? Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thumb for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness brought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ leave behind your regrets and mistakes come today there's no reason to wait Jesus is come Bring your sorrows and trade them for joy. From the ashes a new life is born. Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was brought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ who oh, come to the altar the Father's arms are open wide forgiveness was brought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ What a Savior, isn't he wonderful? Sing Alleluia, Christ is risen. Bow down before him, for he is Lord of Hallelujah, 
Christ is risen. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness is brought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was brought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And now may the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with us and those we love, now and forevermore. Amen. Great to see you guys. Um, The stewards will lead you out safely and securely. And then you can go and chat on the piazza.